In the last decade, endobronchial ultrasound guided transbronchial needle aspiration, or EBUS TBNA, has emerged as the diagnostic procedure of choice in evaluating undiagnosed intrathoracic lymphadenopathy. EBUS TBNA is also currently the preferred modality in the mediastinal staging of lung cancer. The purpose of this video is to review in detail the basics of EBUS bronchoscopy as well as to highlight the technical aspects of the procedure in order to optimize diagnostic yield for performing clinicians. The objectives of this video are to describe the indications for endobronchial ultrasound, to review evidence-based practices on EBUS TBNA, to describe the equipment used for endobronchial ultrasound, to demonstrate procedure preparation and techniques, and to illustrate lymph node mapping based on the International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer. The indications for EBUS TBNA are for staging or restaging of lung cancer, obtaining tissue for the diagnosis of large centrally located tumors, workup of mediastinal and hilar lymphadenopathy, which can aid in the diagnosis of other conditions such as sarcoidosis, lymphoma, or metastatic disease. The diagnostic yield of EBUS TBNA in the staging of non-small cell lung carcinoma was demonstrated in one meta-analysis involving over 1,000 patients to have an overall excellent pooled sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. A second meta-analysis comparing mediastinal lymph node staging of EBUS TBNA and mediastinoscopy found pool sensitivities to be equivalent with more procedural complications and fewer false negatives in the mediastinoscopy group. Molecular markers have become increasingly important in patients with lung cancer in order to identify targetable mutations suitable for personalized therapy, such as EGFR, ALK, and PDL1. A recent meta-analysis including 33 studies with over 2,500 participants demonstrated EBIS TBNA to have a high yield for molecular analysis of both EGFR and ALK mutations. Data for ROS1 and PDL1 mutations were not suitable for meta-analysis. EBIS TBNA is generally a safe and well-tolerated procedure. Complications are often related to sedation and bronchoscopy itself and include hypoxemia, hypotension, and bronchospasm. Complications related to needle aspiration are rare, but include hemorrhage, pneumothorax, and infections such as mediastinitis or lymphadenitis, and fistula formation. Required equipment for endobronchial ultrasound are the EBUS bronchoscope, of which there are currently three available manufacturers, Olympus, Pentax, and Fujifilm. The degree of view ranges from 10 to 45 degrees, depending on the model that is used. Other required equipment includes the EBIS latex probe balloon, 10 cc's of sterile water or normal saline in a lure lock syringe, connector tubing with a three-way stopcock, tools for biopsy, which include 19 through 25 gauge EBIS needles and a suction syringe, and the EBIS processor, which includes the light source and displays of the bronchoscopic and ultrasound images. Collection media for sample processing, such as Cytorich or RPMI, is also needed. Procedural preparation should ensure the availability of monitoring devices such as end tidal CO2 and EKG leads, which should be placed onto the patient for telemetry monitoring. Intravenous access should be established and supplemental oxygen should be provided. The patient's eyes should be covered in order to prevent exposures to blood and secretions. The EBIS scope should have a disposable latex balloon attached to the ultrasound probe. Options for advanced airway include a size 8.5 or above endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask airway or LMA. An LMA may allow for better visualization and sampling of the superior mediastinal lymph nodes. Either moderate sedation or general anesthesia should be provided and the patient should be placed in the supine position. White light bronchoscopy is first performed. Local anesthesia is achieved with lidocaine instilled through the working channel at the level of the vocal cords, main carina, and the right and left secondary carina. An airway examination is performed to identify anatomy and to clear secretions. 
The ebiscope is then introduced into the trachea, avoiding irritation to the vocal cords. The visualized image is a 30 degree view with the Olympus scope. The sheath of the ebis needle and the balloon should be positioned so that only the tips are visualized by the ebis bronchoscope. The ebis scope is then used to identify and visualize the target lymph node. After a target node has been identified, the appropriate ebis needle is inserted through the working channel. The tip of the ebis scope should be in a neutral position to facilitate needle passage through the working channel. Larger needles, such as a 19 gauge, can be used if lymphoma is high on the differential and a core biopsy is required, which may increase the yield of the biopsy. The penetration depth of the needle should be adjusted and should generally be set at 2 centimeters. Real-time tBNA should be utilized to allow for safe sampling of lymph nodes. While visualizing the target lymph node, the needle is advanced in a jabbing motion through the bronchial wall and into the target lymph node under direct visualization. Once the needle is inserted, it may cause the scope to be pushed away from the bronchial wall, which can disrupt the ultrasound image and cause ultrasound artifact. Methods to remedy this include slightly advancing the EBIS scope or inflating the balloon. The stylet is then removed after a few in and out maneuvers in order to dislodge bronchial wall elements. Suction is then applied using the vacuum lock syringe. While visualizing the target lymph node, the needle should be moved back and forth from the distal end of the lymph node capsule to the proximal end. This should be done about 10 to 15 times during each individual pass. The suction is then released and the needle is pulled out of the ebiscope for sample collection. A minimum of three passes should be made at each targeted lymph node site to optimize the diagnostic yield. During sample collection, the appropriate transport media should be used. The tissue core can be removed from the needle lumen by reinserting the stylet. This can also be achieved by instilling one to two cc's of collection media through the needle lumen with a syringe. For specimen preparation, tissue fixatives such as Cytorich are used. Preservatives such as RPMI media should be used for flow cytometry analysis in the workup of suspected lymphoma. EBIS tBNA offers access to all stations adjacent to the trachea or bronchi. These stations are station two, 4, 7, 10, and 11. Levels 5, 6, 8, and 9 lymph nodes are not adjacent to the airway and therefore are not accessible using this technique. Stations 5 and 6 can be approached through an anterior mediastinoscopy or thoracoscopy and stations 8 and 9 can be accessed via endoscopic ultrasound or thoracoscopy. The lymph node stations should be surveyed and sampled in a staging fashion in the evaluation of a known primary lung nodule or mass. In this image, the primary lesion is labeled in green and is located in the superior segment of the right lower lobe. Surveillance and sampling begin at the M3 nodes, which include contralateral, mediastinal, or hilar, as well as any supraclavicular nodes then proceeding to N2 lymph nodes, which include ipsilateral mediastinal or subcarinal nodes, and lastly, the N1 lymph nodes, which include ipsilateral, peribronchial, or hilar lymph nodes. This is done to avoid contamination and false upstaging. Lymph nodes appear hypoechoic and should be differentiated from vascular structures using color Doppler. Any lymph node with a short axis greater than 5 millimeters should be sampled. Station 2R, the upper right paratracheal node, is bordered by the upper border of the manubrium to the intersection of the innominate vein with the trachea. The ebiscope should be placed in the upper trachea at the level of the 4th and 5th tracheal rings with the probe oriented towards the right lateral wall at the 3 o'clock position. Station 2L, the upper left paratracheal node is bordered by the upper border of the manubrium to the superior aspect of the aortic arch. To visualize this station, 
the scope is placed in the upper trachea at the level of the fourth and fifth tracheal rings with the probe oriented towards the left lateral wall at the nine o'clock position. Station 4R, the right lower paratracheal region, is bordered by the caudal margin of the innominate vein to the lower border of the azagous vein. To visualize this station, the ebiscope is placed proximal to the main carina with the probe facing towards the right anterior lateral wall of the trachea, scanning from the 3 o'clock position towards the 12 o'clock position in counterclockwise fashion. In this video, the probe is oriented anterolaterally so that the lymph node can be seen superficial to the superior vena cava. Station 10R, the right hilar node, extends from the lower rim of the azygous vein to the interlobar region between the right upper lobe and bronchus intermedius. To visualize this lymph node station, the ebiscope can be advanced from the main carina to the origin of the right upper lobe bronchus with the probe oriented towards the anterior and right lateral walls. In this view, the scope is oriented laterally so that the node is located distal to the azygous vein, which is seen at the three o'clock position proximally. Station 11R and 11L, the left and right interlobar lymph nodes, are those that are located between the origin of the lobar bronchi. Station 11R superior includes nodes that are located between the right upper lobe bronchus and the bronchus intermedius. To visualize this station, the ebiscope can be moved to the proximal bronchus intermedius just below the secondary carina, separating the upper lobe bronchus from the bronchus intermedius. The probe is oriented towards the right lateral wall and the area between the two o'clock and four o'clock positions is scanned. The lymph node and interlobar artery at the nine o'clock position can be seen. Station seven, the subcarinal nodal station, is bordered by the carina of the trachea to the upper border of the lower lobe bronchus on the left and the lower border of the bronchus intermedius on the right. Station seven can be visualized by placing the scope in the proximal right or left main stem bronchus with the probe facing medially. In this video, the scope is in the right main stem bronchus and the lymph node can be seen above the left atrium. Station 4L, the left lower paratracheal region, is bordered by the upper margin of the aortic arch to the upper rim of the left main pulmonary artery. To visualize station 4L, the scope is placed in the proximal left main stem bronchus at the level of the main carina with the transducer oriented to the left towards the nine o'clock position. The lymph node is seen above the pulmonary artery located at the nine o'clock position distally and below the aortic arch at the three o'clock position proximally. Station 10L, the left hilar node extends from the upper margin of the left pulmonary artery to the interlobar region between the left upper lobe and left lower lobe. To visualize station 10L, the ebiscope is next advanced towards the proximal left upper lobe and oriented towards the 11 o'clock position. Station 11L is comprised of nodes that are located between the left upper lobe and lower lobe bronchi. These nodes can be visualized by advancing the scope towards the proximal part of the left lower lobe bronchus with the probe oriented laterally towards the left. Overall, it can be concluded that EBIS tBNA is a safe, highly sensitive, and cost-effective initial investigation in patients with intrathoracic lymphadenopathy of varying causes. It is important to mention that negative EBIS biopsies of suspicious lymph nodes for example, lymph nodes greater than 10 millimeters in size should be evaluated further with mediastinoscopy or thoracoscopy, which still remain the accepted gold standard.